exposure on a social media aspect. I, I wanted to ask you, this is probably one of the last things I'll, I'll ask you. You were recently talking about the viral virality of Cardano. And, you know, I, I've never really been one to think that Cardano needs marketing. Like, I, I wouldn't just straight out say that. But what does that look like to you? Well, it needs product marketing. So, for example, our network stack is the most sophisticated and best network stack in the entire industry for all proof-of-stake protocols. Why? Well, no one really can answer that outside of a small handful of people that worked on the network stack, and they can talk about the multiplexing, and they can talk about these miniature protocol ideas, and how they can be all model of state machines, and how we can simulate things that other people can't. And there's a lovely paper out of Stanford from, written by David Shee and his co-authors at uh, MIT that kind of talk about all the problems that proof-of-stake protocols have with the network stack that the Bitcoin core developers actually were aware of. It was one of the reasons why they were so dismissive of proof-of-stake. Uh, and it turns out we solved a lot of those problems. Even the paper references us. So that's great, but good product marketing will actually get those USPs down on paper, build infographics, make them viral. And then the community can spread that and talk about that and get people excited about it. And that's one of hundreds of little things that we put in, pieces of magic that most people don't care about, and don't see or even know about. It's like having a beautiful layout of transistors and other things, uh, you know, like uh, capacitors on your, on your motherboard inside your computer. You know, it, you can have your memory in a certain place. It's all shiny and nice. And your CPU can be real pretty and just absolutely perfect cabling job. But let's say it's a closed case. You can't see inside of it. So all that magic is hidden. Product marketing is about opening the case up, putting an exhibition window in it, allowing people to see the memory and all the other stuff, get them excited about it. So that does need to be done. And it's, it's a difficult task because it slows down development. Because at the end of the day, the marketers then have to talk to the engineers and the scientists, and these are non-trivial conversations. It's a lot of work, and that's time they're not spending writing papers and implementing code. So there's trade-offs there. But we've reached a scale where it needs to be done, and it will be done. Uh, and then... Good ground game for social media. I, I mean, good surrogacy development, good resources for surrogates, good memes, very important, good infographics, these types of things. They really help create awareness and get people excited and propagate information and deal with FUD. FUD travels so quickly in this space. Uh, it used to be a game. They stopped doing it, thank God. But years ago, they used to, on 4chan and other places, make up that founders of projects are dead. Like, I was killed three times in Vitalik 7, you know. And they say, oh, Vitalik was killed in a car accident. And then it even sometimes get picked up by media. And then, of course, it would hit the price. And it spread like wildfire. Everybody's retweeting. Everybody's going to Facebook. And these people are ringing my phone saying, Charles, are you okay? I said, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, and they'd, they'd be real clever. They do it when I'm going fishing or on vacation or something like that. So it'd be harder to reach me, you know, these types of things. So, uh good social media game gives you some resilience against that stuff and it, it helps protect people in the short term from those things in addition to getting good facts out so and that's kind of a lot of that uh, is up to kind of the community and you know content creators i mean is that kind of something like content creators like myself for instance is that something that we could help with i guess as well yeah because you're consumers of it you know if they're good infographics good product marketing it should be easy for you to understand and then integrate and explain the protocol and tell people. That's how you do surrogacy development. And if there are things you don't understand, there should be a way to commission work. Yeah. There should be a place to go to ask questions. There should be a process to get some things done and be mystified. You have to understand there are different consumers for different artifacts. We wrote the 130 papers for scientists. So when you look at them, they got crazy math in them. You know, there's weird ass proofs. There's like strange Greek symbols. And you're like, holy shit, I haven't seen this since the fraternity days. You know, stuff is crazy in there. It's not meant for normal people, and that's fine, okay? Because it, the point is to communicate scientific knowledge to scientists and have them be able to speak in that domain-specific language. Just like laws are not necessarily written for normal people to read. They're written for lawyers to read and, and, and interpret. And just like, you know, if you're a physicist, your physics papers aren't written for mainstream people to read, like oh, quantum chromodynamics. What the <laughs> fuck is that? You know, it's, it's crazy stuff. So there needs to be somebody who translates that arcane work and says, well, what is this really about? What's the value of that? And then people like yourself would then consume the translations. It's yeah. not reasonable to assume that a podcaster is going to go read the Ouroboros papers 
understand them and understand why they're special and unique and meaningful. Any hey, more so than it's a lot of people have. <laughs> There's several Ouroboros explainer videos and and so forth. So you know, through the years, we've done blog posts and we've done YouTube videos and uh, interviews and things like that. But I think we need to up that game a little bit, and that's going to be a big focus in uh, 2022. And then I think that's going to help a lot create the competitive differentiation so people can really understand how magical it is. And also the cross-industry value of Cardano. Like, for example, the Bitcoin Maxis. Even if they hate us, we're right now the experiment for how to do smart contracts natively on Bitcoin. If they wanted to do it, it's going to look something like extended UTXO and Plutus. So if you're a maxi, our success is your success. We're basically doing your homework for you. And you can crib note off of it. You can copy off of it. But they don't get that. They think it's some zero. And uh, maybe if we communicated a little bit better, that would help build some inroads um, here and there. For example, our hard fork combinator is a perfect way to upgrade a cryptocurrency. And if Ethereum had it, their road to Ethereum 2 would be significantly easier. And they would have to put in these difficulty bombs and all these other things, right? You know, so yeah. we have that native advantage. Isn't that good for them to study that type of stuff? The formal verification work we do, people don't remember that because we're EVM interoperable, by definition, you have to certify Ethereum smart contracts. So doesn't that mean that the work we do there helps Vitalik and his cohorts build better solidity code? You know, and you have their ecosystem. So, so that's the other side of good product marketing is recognizing the enemy of my enemy is my friend and what's good for me might be good for them. Yeah. I think Cardano is pretty good at building bridges. I think it's what makes it tough as the other, the other end of the spectrum. Ah, they hate me. That's why. <laughs> <laughs>